All right. How about that worship, huh? That worship was, it's like, just you can just kiss it. It's so good. Just, uh, have you ever, like, I was sitting here, and I, uh, I really, 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 really can't stress how really, really, really much I needed that worship. Because it's just, like, the world sucks, man. <laughs> you know? And I haven't been in the uh, I haven't been in the marketplace, and I thought that uh, things would just be, uh, for lack of words, magically. Magically is not really a good word, but I just thought they would just be like wonderfully different, um, and like I wouldn't have some of these like mental struggles and stuff like that. Um, but even if you're not uh, weighed down by this stuff that you put on your life, like my job and my uh, everything that I had put on my life before I quit my job. Um, I thought that when I quit, it would be a lot easier. And it was like, God was just like, you got to be different. You know, you got to be different. You got to, you got to be tenacious. You got to want me with everything that you are. Your heart has to burn with a fiery passion. And I was talking to the to elders on Wednesday and um, I always tell them like when people hear me talk, they must think that it, like, I don't know, I just, this is my thinking, but like, it's like a, not like a backslidden Jesse, but it's like, I always, you guys always hear from me or I feel like that fire has just, just been waned and died out. And um, really what God's getting me to realize is, you know, I'm really hard on myself too. And I'd like, I want to, I want to gauge where I'm at, you know, I need to know where I'm, where I'm flowing, where I'm failing, where I'm, where I'm slow, where I'm fast. And, um, God was just telling me that like I'm I'm way too hard on myself. Um but that is in there because I'm aggressive with my relationship with Jesus. Cuz I I view that fire in my heart and I say it's not a thousand degrees, it's 99.9. I need it a thousand because he's jealous for me and he wants my heart to burn a thousand. He doesn't want it to burn 99.99 cuz that's not good enough for him because he gave me a thousand and he taught me how to have that access and I need to draw on that access. Did you ever feel like I was sitting here and I was just like, I was just so taken. It was just so cool because it was like, have you ever felt like a worship set was just for you? You know, it was just like the songs, all these songs that you picked out were just for me. I needed this one. I needed that one. I needed that one. Everything you're saying right now is speaking to my heart. That should be every worship set, my friends. That should be because God, I was just saying like, God, thank you for giving this worship set to me. Just to you know, just just to me personally, because I needed everything here, and thank you for me to be able to to hear what you're saying through these songs and speaking to my heart, God. It's just for me. It's just for me. And then he was telling me he was like, every worship set is just for you. Every worship set is just for Chad. It's just for Bill. It's just for Nancy. It's just for Steve. Because really, what it is is it's an audience of one. Because that's who we're worshiping. It's just him. It doesn't matter. You know, it's kind of hard when you got uh, you got kids and they want to. Oh no, stop it! And it's like, come on, man. Let's not let's not be distracting. And I'm on the front row, so it's kind of hard to like uh, really just in tune and you know go for it. Um, but God's good and His grace and His mercy, and He would just He just like lets lets you get loved. And um, I just really want to encourage you guys that if you're going into a worship song, I remember when I was going to church and I'm like another song like come on man we did like three of them like normally we're like normally like three and out we're good and i was just like i lately i just feel like giving up like if i'm preaching no just keep them up there pick five more songs and because that's like to me it just feels like it's more ministering than um could ever be done and it's just the that worship was just beautiful so if you're having a hard time in worship just remember that this worship is 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 for you and it's for him and it's the i just can't stress it enough the audience of one so if you're thinking about your job and your family and this and that, like, no, man, you're missing it. Close your eyes. See his face. Focus on him. Feel his love. You don't feel enthusiasm. God, I don't feel enthusiasm for worshiping right now. I'm going to sit right here until you give it to me. God, overwhelm my heart. I'm not feeling it. My pastor was always funny. He was like, if you're, if you're going into worship and you don't really feel like it, he was like, fake it till you make it. And he was like, because if you go like this and you just focus on Jesus' face, you have no choice but to be encountered by him. And, um, so if you're really just feeling dry and heavy and stuff like that, just clear it, man. You're in worship. Like, uh, the secular world, we're on a cruise ship and, um, there was all these people and they were just listening to the piano play or whatever. And everybody was just stopping, standing and listening. And me and Cindy were getting to realize like, 
in the secular world, this is the only time that people hear live music, you know, like us as Christians, we are so blessed that, you know, there's every Sunday we get to hear this worship and we get to be in here and we get to experience it because there's, there's nothing like more like beautiful than music, you know, and then incorporately doing this. And I think that's where, uh, we have it so good. And even if you have friends that do worship nights and prayer nights, you could be hitting worship two, three times a week. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not one to drive in my car and listen to music, but even then it's, it's way better than anything else you could sing or listen to. It's just, we, I just, I just is getting so blown away by worship and worship and worship. And that's not even what I was going to talk about, but it's like, God, man, we get, to, we get to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, you know, and then um, some of the things in the songs that I just just really just touch my heart, and I just I just really want people to know that when you sing these songs, they are like they are not just words, you know, they're declarations over your life. So like, if if you don't like, I don't know, it's just weird, but like when I sing it, I feel it, I know it, I declare it because that is what it is, and I'm singing to the champion. I'm not singing to the radio station or to the to the oh this song, you know, like you know, there's some songs that are good and all that stuff, but it's just like man, we're just wasting time unless you're just like, you're beautiful, you're it, you're everything, you're, you're, you're everything to me. But it says, uh, God won't fail us. He is our firm foundation. Um, you don't want God to fail you? Make him your firm foundation. I mean, come on. It's just so easy. The cheat codes are there. He'll never fail you. And then, um, I don't know, I feel singled out because Champion's one of my favorite songs. And I feel like, <laughs> Brittany's like, oh, Jesse's preaching, let's, let's play Champion. <laughs> But God, God dropped that in there, probably. <laughs> oh, man, that song just wrecks me. You know, it says, um, it may look like I'm surrounded. How many of you guys have been, how many of you guys felt surrounded in your life? I mean, we're talking anxiety. We're talking depression. We're talking debt. We're talking uh, anything, you name it, it's there, you know, like either your diet, your finances. I'm surrounded. Oh, look at all these things coming in. What are you focused on? You're focused on those things. Who should you be focused on? Him. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I know what I'm looking at. I'm surrounded by you. I'm not surrounded by debt. I'm not surrounded by fear. I'm not surrounded by anxiety. I'm not surrounded by gossip. No, I'm surrounded by you. This is so beautiful. And I saw a vision of, of just being overwhelmed by these things and and it was like I'm here and then all, I could just I could just see them coming around me and it was just like they were like clamoring over each other just to get to me and I'm like oh no there's 10 feet 9 feet 8 feet 7 feet and then all of a sudden it was like when it was just gold and, and they all fell because they're, they're never going to be able to get to me because when, when it comes to you you cry out to him but at what point do you cry out to him do you cry out when they're five feet away, ten feet away, one foot away? Recognize the state of your heart and cry out to him. You even see him a mile off say, no, God, over there, that's where you stay. Don't, don't be like, oh, it's, it's far out there. It's got a little bit. No. Be aggressive. This is mine. This is who he says I am. This will not overwhelm me. I am not worthless. I feel like... I don't know, for some reason I feel like, you know, unworthiness keeps trying to creep in and get at me, but he's like, you are who I say you are. You know what I mean? So instead of being, so when it went, when it went boom and it went like that, so like when I was seeing it, I was seeing like, uh, like kind of like Spartan, like wearing armor all in black and they had like names above them, you know, and anxiety and depression and debt and all this stuff. And then when it went boom and it all went gold, um, I could see like the, the fruits of the spirit above it now. So it was like when anxiety left, it was like anxiety just turned into peace, you know? And then it was just like uh, joy, fear went and it turned into joy. You know what I mean? Because that's what he does. He takes that fear and he turns it into joy. He takes that anxiety and he turns it into peace. He's like, why are you feeling this? I didn't make you to feel this. And you don't like the way you feel because I didn't make it. It's not yours. Just throw it off. <laughs> don't even remember it. Oh, worship was really good. I love it. Okay. Let's go to, uh, I think last time I went Romans 13. And I've just been stuck in a Roman cycle. Like, boom, boom. It's just a really, really good book. And I really encourage you guys to open it up. Especially right now to Romans 10. Let 
I'm gonna I'm gonna read a little bit, talk a little bit, give you guys kind of like uh, my understanding. And I'm a very, if you guys obviously know already, but like I'm a very visual person. So like when I'm reading something, I like to like visualize it and try to explain it out loud. Um, because like when I'm reading to my girls, like even um, Peyton was helping me go over it today on the way here. And it was just cool because like, I realized that like my visual conversation can help people like tie points together. And, um, it's probably mainly because I have several conversations with myself in my head daily. <laughs> like when you're going to go, like if your boss is mad at you and you're like, okay, I got to go talk to my boss. If I say this, he's going to say this. And then if I say this, he can say this. But if he says that, I'll say this. I don't know what they call that, but that's what goes on up here a lot. All right, so Romans 10, I'm just going to jump right into it. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And I like to say, Dear brothers and sisters, the longings of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Harrisonville to be saved. (laughs) I love it. I know what... I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected zeal. So what I think is really cool about this, I'll just read, I'll just read a couple and then I'll go back. I know, what en- I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected zeal, for they don't understand what God's, they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. Refusing to accept God's way, they cling to their own way of getting right with God, by trying to keep the law. So they were talking about the Jews and the Jews not recognizing Jesus as the Messiah. Um, So that's where that's at. And I like to um, try to relate that now to what's going on in our lives and what that looks like to to the natural things. Um, But what I like in there when it says, um, I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but as misdirected zeal. Has anybody ever seen somebody freshly saved and super on fire for the Lord. I've definitely been one of those people. <laughs> and um, I know that um, like through discipleship and evangelism, and you get these people that are just, just super on fire, and they want to send me, I'll go anywhere, just go boom, boom. And, like I want to go preach in this church and that church and this church, and they just got saved like a week ago. Um, so like that's what I... That's what I uh, think for... Um, he recognizes their enthusiasm, right? So God's like, ooh, He's not saying it's like all completely bad. He's like, ooh, there's enthusiasm there. I see that. That's good. But it's misdirected zeal. You know what I mean? So in our in our world, I think about people who are newly saved and they just want to go and they want to do and it's like, hey, easy <laughs> pump the brake scooter. Like just and that's I think it's where discipleship comes in, where you can find somebody who's has crazy enthusiasm and mis misguided zeal and you can be like, Hey, this is good. Let's hone in on it. Because you know, that was me and my pastor was like Easy, bud. Let's uh, let's you know, let's work on knocking on a door first before you uh, want to go and open air preach or something like that. And I have in my notes uh, when 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 people get first saved, they do some pretty off the wall stuff. And then as it goes further, it says, "For they don't understand God's way of making people right with Himself, but refusing to accept God's way and cling to their own ways is um." something like leaning on their own understanding versus God's understanding. So like if they, if you like read something and you try to take it for yourself without taking it before God, I would say that's misguided zeal, you know, like really, really focus on the words that God gives you and the things that you read, really bring it before him and in front of him and saying, God, speak to me, speak to my heart on this issue. And then back in the day, they were, they were still trying to like keep the 10 commandments. Okay, let's see where we at. I think verse four. For Christ, it was so good. For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which these laws was given. As a result, all who believe in Him were made right with God. So, so Jesus, He did it. He did it. He did it all. And I have uh, what a reassurance in just four verses. So He was saying, "There's misguided zeal. Um, there's people that they don't understand God's way of making people right." And they're refusing to accept God's way. I would just hate to be in that position. All right, five. For Moses writes the law, the law's way of making a person right with God requires obedience to all his commands. But faith's way of getting right with God says, 
don't say in your heart who will go up to heaven to bring Christ down to earth. And don't say who will go down to the place of the dead to bring Christ back to life again. So I have in my notes, there was the law, and that was the goal. So when Moses came down and he gave the law, here's the Ten Commandments, and these are everything that you need to be right, okay? And they were absolutely unobtainable by the people of the time, ever. And I think what was really cool was those Ten Commandments became the goal, and then Jesus came down and fulfilled the Ten Commandments, and... Now, what is the goal if you fulfilled it? The goal is now Jesus, because he says, love God, love people. And Jesus already fulfilled that, so now the new goal is Jesus. I said, now Jesus came and fulfilled the law, and now that Jesus is the goal. Christ achieved everything we need. All we need to do is just love him. And it says, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And the message is this very message about the faith that we preach. And um, what I really love about this was during worship, I just kept uh, hearing some, uh, when when Brittany was speaking, I just kept hearing some some key points that just really got me excited. And it was like, it was salvation. And um, this is going to be more of an evangelistic message because um, there's only by one name that you can be saved, and his name is Jesus. It says, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips, and it is in your heart. And every time when I was reading this this week, I just, I just kept getting, kind of getting messed up by it because it was like, this message is very close at hand. Is it on your lips? And for it to be on your lips, it has to be in your heart. So how do we get it in our heart? And I was talking to my kids, and I was, like, just running it by them, and I was just like, how how do you know that if you tell somebody that Jesus loves you, how do you know? And it's, well, it's, it's what we always do. It's, yeah, I know, but um, do you feel it in your heart? And I was talking to Peyton, and I, she, was, she was like, yeah. And, um, and I was just like, well, how do you recognize that? And um, she could chalk it up to... Um, a longing and a needing for him. And, um, and I think she even used the word cling. It was, I wish I could, um, remember how she said it, but it was just like, um, in order to tell somebody about Jesus and to be authentic and for it to work, it has to be in your heart. It can't just be like, Jesus loves you. I mean, those things are great, but to see the true power of God move, you need to let him place it in your heart. Verse 9 says, if we confess, and then, okay, uh, some people might be asking, and some people might not know, what is the message? So he says, here's the message, it's close at hand, and somebody reading the Bible says, what's the message? And then God's always cool because he just brings it right back. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. How much more clear could that be? (laughs) I mean, come on. It's so if I were to ask you, hey, if I was to come to you and be like, hey, this person is ready. They want to accept Jesus. You know, revival's coming, right? Here. Here. If somebody was brought to you and said, I want to accept Jesus, how do I do it? Would would everybody in this room, like, know what to do? Because at that time, you know, it's happened to me, too, and I've been like, this is, this is a really important moment right now for this person. And I want to make sure that God can just go for it, right? So is that message on my lips and in my heart? Listen, friend. <laughs> You must confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And, okay, that's easy. Jesus, you're Lord. Oh, wait, there's the next part. And believe it in your heart. What does that look like? Confess it with your mouth. Believe it in your heart. 
believe it in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you will be saved. So easy. For it is by, so, okay, so we must confess with our mouth and then believe it in our heart. And then it says, for it is, so once we start believing in our heart, it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. So for me, believing in your heart means I trust you. You know, I trust that this is true. I trust that Jesus came down and he died for me. And then confess it with your mouth that you are saved. So when when you're saved, when you get done, you should know that you're saved. Because when you have an encounter with God like that, like for me, it was you're real. You're so real. And Jesus needs to become real. I just don't want it to be in a time where, um, you know, there's going to be like a great increase and there's going to be a lot of good feelings and stuff like that. But when it comes time to it, like we really need to deep dive deep into relationship with people. Like, are you still believing what you believed yesterday? You know, but did you wake up today believing what you said yesterday? Is God still in your heart? You know, find some people in your life where you can just, and I've said this a lot of times, but there's just people that you guys need to check up with. There's people that are relying on you to, to follow up with them and say, how's your heart? How are you doing I know that um, last week you got really encountered. How are you today? You know, if you if you if you see somebody and you you can have that relationship with them, don't be afraid to open up your mouth because just like in the uh, the, the worship, when you open up your mouth, miracles start breaking out. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in Him will never be disgraced. Do you never want to be disgraced? I do. Trust in him. Jews and Gentiles are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. So with 11, it says, as the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. And that word uh, trust again comes up very, very prominent for me. Um, and I wrote down in my, my notes, it sounds like it's a trusting process. So there's going to be times in your life where you're going through some stuff and you said that you said, God, you're supposed to be here. Like I feel surrounded and they're coming. They're 10 feet away, nine feet away. God, I still trust you. Okay. Open up your mouth. (laughs) Go. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For me in that, in this time, for like for the Jews and the Gentiles, everybody in America, America, everybody in the whole world are the same in this respect. We have, we all have the same Lord, but some choose to, to look at a different one. You know, some people's Lord is their money. Some people's Lord is Buddha. Some people's Lord is their job. Some people's Lord is their friends or their house, their Facebook, their personal time. I love how um, the Lord gives generously. And then it follows it up with, to all who call on him. Do you want the Lord to give generously to you? Are you calling on him? Um, You know, like when when you're in debt and you need, um, like he was saying, when you need your finances taken care of, um, are you calling on him to fulfill that need for you? Or are you thinking, you know, there's a responsible way, you know, I need to do this and this and this and this to make money. But are you calling on him for that strategy? God, I need this fulfilled. What am I going to do? Because normally my first response is to take out the notebook and start pros and cons in it and stuff like that and trying to, if I can do this and if I save this much money, I can do this. Yes, that stuff is responsible. But the first step is to go to him and be like, God, I need your help. I'm going to go in this room and we're going to figure out this problem together. And if I don't have an answer when I come out of that room, I'm going to go back again. 
God, speak to me. And sometimes if I'm if I have an issue like that that I'm trying to like I was just saying, and if he doesn't like speak to you and you don't figure it out, um, a lot of the times for me personally, that's because I have a different issue there that he wants to confront before we get to this issue. So like if he's not speaking to you on a certain thing or you don't feel like he's speaking to you on a certain thing, um, really just be like God. Okay, I'm not I'm not hearing your voice. Why am I not? And he was like, because I'm not talking. I don't want to talk to you about this right now. I want to talk to you about this. You know, and it's just like in um, in Romans 13 when I was preaching, it's like we have to, and this has been messing me up ever since, but it's just like we have to view ourselves honestly. We have to go in and look at ourselves. Like even every day we get up and we go before the Lord, we must we must view ourselves honestly because who are we fooling when we go into this place with him? I want to bring I want to bring the best of me every time I come to him. All right, so I'm going to reiterate 12. I know I repeat myself a couple times, but Jews and Gentiles are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. And then I love verse 13 is the icing on the cake. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. What is more generous than that? (laughs) Everyone who calls on him. All right, they have the same. Sorry, guys. Um, they have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. So if you're going to call on him, he's going to give generously. But what I love is the most generous thing he can do is to get you into heaven, to be saved, to be with him for eternity. So when people are thinking that he gives generously, they're probably thinking this, 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 and that, but the most generous gift is just to be made one with him. (laughs) He was just like, you think all these other things, but really this one thing that matters, and that's me and you together forever and i get um i get really pumped up on this on this next one and i don't have too much after this um this just really pumps me up on this one all right verse 14 but this is like this is so cool because like when i read this it's kind of just like I, i in my in my heart i feel like um, like a college football game and they have like that, that fight song playing and everybody's getting pumped up and um, it, just, it just really amps me up to go share the gospel. But um, verse 14 says, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent. (laughs) You want to be saved? Call on him. Call on who? Jesus. So what they're saying is, um, if somebody is looking for Jesus, how can that someone, how can that someone believe in somebody that they've never heard about? And how can they hear about somebody that nobody's talking about? You know, are we talking about him? Because there's people out there that don't know about him. Okay, there's people out there that, that know about him, but they don't know him personally, okay? It's cool if you know about Jesus. But what's even better is when you have that that relationship with him. And then I love it um, when it says, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. Miss girl, Jesse, you want to come up? I suppose I could have just said Jesse, huh? <laughs> like I said before, it kind of freaks me out when people are like, Jesse, you want to come up? And I'm like, eh, what? We don't think we discussed any of this. I don't know what, what's going on. But praise God, we have another Jesse. <laughs> so I'm sorry if this uh, this message is a little scatterbrained. I just feel like, um, I feel like I was kind of all over the place in this message. But, like, realistically, um, what it is is... Um, there's there's one name 
There is one name, and his name is Jesus. Man, I'm just feeling like some kind of like a block here. Shut that good on now. Jesus, we worship you. I'm gonna pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, there's nobody like you. Let's take authority over this ground right now. We just tell every distraction to get out now in Jesus' name. We just tell every distraction to go now in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for your gospel. I thank you for your peace. I thank you for your comfort, God. I thank you that you're more than what we're going through in this world. I thank you, God, that, that you made it absolutely clear to us that there's only, there's only one way. God, I thank you that Jesus is the doorway to get to you. God, I thank you that you made it so easy that you say that there's just by one name you will be saved, and his name is Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that you became man, that you came down to earth, and that you fulfilled it all so that we could be with you, God. Jesus, I thank you that you got what we deserved so that we can get what you deserve. Jesus, I thank you that you saw in us what you see. Jesus, I thank you that you don't see broken people when you look at us. I thank you, God, that you see a bride. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life for us. felt like, who am I? Who am I that you would give your life for me? I just break unworthiness right now in Jesus' name. I just break depression right now in Jesus' name. If you feel like you just know about Jesus, if you feel like you've grown up in your life and you've just heard him, heard him spoken about and you know that he's a good guy I just want to let you know that God is up there and he's not looking down on you and he's not critiquing everything you do wrong he doesn't see that when he looks at you he sees a son and a daughter so if you feel like God's just this big guy upstairs who's just very displeased with you you're wrong and that's the devil trying to hold you down. He's pleased with you. Be pleased with yourself. If you have stuff in your life that you feel like you're displeased with, God's pushing you in that direction and he's nudging you to work on it. He says, it's not too late, son. Not too late, daughter. It's not too late, church. View yourself honestly. And if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know who I'm talking about, please come up here and we'll pray with you. We will talk with you. We'll be with you. This isn't a high pressure thing, but it's your eternity we're talking about. People are dying and going to hell every day. I beg you, if you do not know him personally, please come forward and we'll pray for you. There's a deepening and a quickening that needs to happen in you. There's a time coming. There's a time coming for everybody. Don't miss your time.
hearing is a prayer. God, I ask you to encounter our hearts. Love us. If you want a deeper relationship with God, if you're longing, if you just feel this thing that there's always just something's missing and, you know, being a Christian is great, but like, I want to feel you, God. I want to know that you're real. He will fulfill. If you're hungry, he will fill you. He will fill you to the point that you're hungry. If you need prayer for anything, healing, you got some stuff you're working through, it's okay. Come up here. Pride has has no stance up here. Worship you, Jesus, for love.